Hello guys, welcome back to another video. I was on vacation, so that's why I kind of disappeared for nine days if you didn't know, but I'm back. And yes, we are commencing the next grind of Mr. Iron Bar now. That is the new arc in the Mr. Iron Bar journey here. Now, let's talk about next. Next is one of the new bosses in the game, the fifth God Wars boss, and also one of the strongest bosses in the game. And let's talk about the drop. So next drops a bunch of really good items. It drops the Zarya Van Braces, best in slot range gloves. Uh, the Nihil Horn is used to make the Zarya Crossbow the best in slot crossbow in the game. It has a really powerful effect that guarantees a bolt special attack. So Ruby Bolts, you can guarantee it to proc with a special. And it can hit 10% more damage. Torva is the new best in slot overall melee equipment in the game. It comes with a helmet, body, and the legs. You will be able to get about 1 or 2 max hits over Bandos with this setup. And you have the Ancient Hilts, which is used to make the Zara's God Sword. So let's talk about the logistics of getting the drops. I want to get all the drops, and it's going to be very similar to Nightmare in the sense that it is going to be stupidly time-consuming to get all the drops. Here's a graph that somebody by the name of Cohen C made that looks to be very correct here. But this graph shows that assuming you're killing next with six people, this is how much KC it would take for an individual to complete all the items on average. So the average KC is going to be 5,600 kills. All right, 5,600 kills to get every single drop, assuming the pet as well, I believe. So let's do some really rough math of how long it would take me to get all the drops at 5,600 kills in six man. So that is 5,600 times about five minutes. And we're looking at roughly 28,000 minutes, which converts to 466 hours. Yes, this is going to be a very long grind. And this does not include the time that I'll need to spend to make brews and restores and all that stuff. Because this boss consumes those like crazy. So probably a bit more than that. Let's go 500 hours. So yeah, we're talking like 500 plus hour grind easily. So the last thing we did on Mr. Iron Bar was the combat achievement diaries. All of it. All the way up to Grandmaster, we got the Zuckum, etc. And one of the perks is super amazing for the upcoming next grind because, like every other God Wars boss, you do need to get KC to enter the room each time, unless you have ecumenical keys. This will mean that I most likely do not need to camp for ecu keys, instead, just get 30 kill count instead of 40 kill count for next every time. So that is going to be so much nicer because camping Echo Keys is really annoying. If you do not want to miss out on the next grind for all items and also eventually being able to test out all these equipment at all the different bosses and finding out all the unique ways of using it, definitely subscribe to the channel so that way you don't miss out and also consider liking the video if you enjoyed it. All right, we can get out of here. We got the last piece. Sweet. So the day before next, I went for five ecumenical keys just to be as prepared as I could. So to speed up the process, I went with barrage method, which involved not wearing like bandos items so that all the orcs and other bandos minions would pile up on me and I would just barrage them. And I would say this method is probably really good in general for like Armadale grinding just because, yeah, you'll get the fastest ecu keys that way. I will briefly talk about day one next just because you guys have probably seen it in other videos. I'm a bit late because I was on vacation. But yeah, Day 1 Next was so cool. I never was able to do Next on Day 1 in the original game. So it was kind of cool to be able to, to relive that experience. So I'm using Entity Hider because there's just too many people in the room. But look at the minimap names. You can tell that there's 80 people in there. Like every world had somewhere between like 40 and 80 people for a majority of the day. Because the boss was... Not scaled, it still isn't scaled HP wise. With 80 people, the boss just dies in like a minute. Yeah, super fast. So, doing next in a mass is definitely really easy. Even to this day, you can still find some mass worlds for next. Like, just the top, like, first few worlds in the RuneScape world selector will probably have a mass in it. And yeah, that's an easy way to start doing next for yourself. Although, the downside is that the chance of getting a drop is incredibly low. The current rate right now is somewhere between 1 in 50-ish to see a drop. And if there's like 40 people, you have to times the rarity by 40 for your personal chance, which is incredibly rare. I did 24 hours of next on release day. 
in a mass of like 60, 80 people. And let me just tell you, I probably saw like 30 items, but not a single one goes to me. And that's not even like unlucky or anything, right? It's just that there's that many people. So your chances are so low. So I definitely prefer smaller teams is what I eventually started doing. 501 KC. You know what? 500 is too uh, mainstream to show. So I'll show you 501. So I don't have a spectral shield to reduce the prayer drain from next, but the Ellie seems to be doing pretty good too. So I don't really think I need to grind Corp too hard for spectral. Oh, it does work. Ellie does work on uh, reducing damage. Yeah, yeah, I just saw it. Uh, I just saw it proc. Sam, someone almost died. Oh, wild! Oh my god, wildness got it. Holy shit. I just said good luck to the, to the boy. Yeah. Oh my god, that's like my 20th item. 20 plus item I saw. So the most dangerous phase is definitely the shadow phase in terms of if you aren't paying attention, you can really get insanely comboed by massive damage. Two reasons. The darkness factor, if you get close to the boss when it's really dark, it can basically hit extra high and it can spam a lot of unavoidable damage. Good thing I was 4 HP, dude. <laughs> so after my 24 hours of early release next, I went on vacation for like nine days. Yeah, and um, I did play a little bit of RuneScape in between. Just because there was, a, you know, some free time, right? On my laptop. And, um, yeah, I hadn't played RuneScape on my laptop, recorded anything on my laptop in a long time. So, I messed up my buttons. The F keys are just not in the same spots that my muscle memory is used to. So, yeah, I was doing a few kills in my small group with some friends. And I got a freaking next pet. The second rare drop at next, right behind the Zaro's Hilt. Oh my god, dude. And uh, yeah, I pressed the wrong button, so it didn't record. But I got the aftermath, though, you know? So yeah, it's crazy. My friend, uh, Gozu, also got the next pet earlier in the day, too. So yeah. One of the cool things about this pet is that it is the only pet that can run. Yeah, this pet can run. It's insane. Like, it will follow you step by step, unlike other pets when you start running. It just, yeah, it'll always catch up to you. So that's cool. And also, this is uh, pet number 27, man. So I would say I'm pretty lucky at next. And I really haven't done that many kills in small teams to really complain about not getting drops. So yeah, pretty nice start. Ever since I got back home, though, I've been doing small group nexus. So somewhere between four to six people. Much more fun than masses. Masses, they're fast, easy. But man, you see drops that you just will never get because chances are so low. But in a six man, for example, at a base rate of 50, that's uh, 1 in 300 next kills for your own personal drop. So it's not too bad. Reminds me of Nightmare, though. It's very grindy, very time-consuming for sure. And hella costly on Bruce. Oh, my God. The only downside, the major downside about next right now is uh, the food consumption is disgusting. Like, no other grind I've done so far burns through Bruce and restores like next, I'll tell you. Small group next is definitely where the real difficulty lies. Lots of times, you and your teammates will often have varying supplies towards the end of the trip. And sometimes, I gotta really be crafty with how I make it out alive. Like, for example, this kill here. Other teammate got supplies, but this kill was really rough on me. I took way more damage, so I ran out of food earlier. But I found ways to kind of do sneak attacks, uh, go out of range. And then like pop a hit and go out of range again so the boss doesn't notice me. And I was able to survive and yeah, contribute to killing the boss. Huh. 46 man is also pretty convenient in terms of not having to re-KC. By the time I finish my trip, I usually already have like 30 KC. So I can just go right back in and not have to re-KC. Feels good, man. Perks of being a Grandmaster. Yeah. So there's an altar in the next room where if you wear a Zara's item, which in this video here... I'm wearing a Zaros Bracer. The altar will heal your hit points, your prayer, your run energy, and your spec bar back to full in an instant. And you can use it in the middle of the fights. There's a lot of times where the boss just doesn't do anything for a few seconds, and you can use that time to just heal back up. So yeah, you can do that mid-fight. Haha, <laughs> using the altar mid-fight, so nice. So I'm going to quickly explain a small group next fight from start to beginning. 
Now, this is not the most efficient method by all, any means, but this is a method that most small teams can probably execute. I will most likely be learning some more sweaty methods over time as I you know, do more necks from other players. But the start of the fight is pretty straightforward. You want to group up in the middle, land a hammer spec, and then switch back to your range gear or your melee gear. Rapier or I think mace is also a pretty good alternative. So for range gear, you can go T-bow or of course uh, ACB or the Zara crossbow. But yeah, I don't have the Zara crossbow, so I think T-bow is probably my best bet. But yeah, this phase, pray mage and try to make sure the person thinking smoke is in the right spot which is usually the north spot and yeah take the smoke so that way it's expected and after that you just go and kill the the mage minion which is i believe fumus and if you do end up getting cough just stay away from your teammates and then after that you want to pray range because it's going to use range attacks from now on and you don't want to be next to the boss the closer you are to the boss the more damage it's going to do to you. So yeah, try to avoid it. The best thing you need to do here is to make sure that the boss is not next to Umbra, the next mage minion. Because Umbra mages and hits really hard. So you don't want to try to tank range and mage at the same time. It's really dangerous. And you also don't want the boss next to Umbra either. Because again, if you get close to it, it'll do more damage. So yeah, it's good to make sure that if you have the boss aggro to you, you lure it away from the umbra minion really important so whittle it down and uh, avoid the mechanics you know the dark holes and stuff avoid the boss kill umbra and once umbra is done it's the blood phase blood phase is not too dangerous although it can get kind of long if you're not focusing your dps properly but there's two things to look out for when it summons the blood reavers at least kill the first set of blood reavers so that way she doesn't heal a ton off of it and then the other one is the sacrifice perk. So if she summons sacrifice on you, you have to make sure you run away fast enough. So that way the sacrifice doesn't work. Like here, for example, I'm going to run away. And it should say that I dodged it. And you want to have one person tanking and it will focus on the person that's farthest away. So in this case is me. So that way it's predictable. If you guys are too close to each other and it, she uses the blood tie, it will mob everyone near you, which heals her more. So it's better to have just one person tanking far away. But yeah, after that, you're going to fight the mage minion. So just go ahead and DPS it down with uh, rapier or Tebow, whatever. And then you go to the ice phase. Ice phase, uh, definitely a heavy damaging phase because it does use ice barrage which yeah just hits everybody like an aoe so it's good to hug the boss so that way it tries to melee you a lot by the way if you get close to it it, it will melee in pretty much any phase and melee can be really useful during the later phases to just you know stop her from using her aoe attacks so she has two abilities she summons contain ice spikes around her easy to dodge just move away from her and she can also trap you in ice people can just free you with melee attacks so otherwise you'll get hit like a 60 or 70 and then after that you kill the mage minion and finally it's the last phase the czar's phase so the czar's phase is just a dps test you just have to tank her melee and magic attacks she will go for the person with the lowest defense and then we'll switch off to the second person with the lowest defense uh, i think she does like five hits and then switches recommended to hug her again let her hit you with melee, protect from melee. She'll sometimes hit you with magic, which both can hit 30s if you don't have the right pearl on. And yeah, it just does a lot of damage. Your prayer is going to get drained a ton. Your food is going to get sunk. So eat up, survive, and you'll get the kill. The dream, bro. Trying to get that full Torva. Might take a while, though. Damn. What? I got 40? Whoa, that's uh, that's way too many ecumenical key shards. What the hell? I've never seen that many. I almost made one whole key. I'm kind of behind on the, the information. Yeah, this guy keeps... Stop pulling me! Oh my god. Seriously, stop pulling me. Holy shit. Wow, he's just been pulling everybody. Low pipe heal, please. 
I, oh, the blowpipe actually lands on the boss decently. Damn, that blowpipe spec is not to be underestimated. That was great. There you go. Damn, it's so nice, man. No more having to, like, clean my herbs and stuff, because I have so much GP anyways. But I gotta stock up on potions for next prep, and, uh, yeah, just all that usual stuff. Every time I start a big grind, there's always something I gotta do in preparation. So, ooh, the restores definitely need to stop back up on the restores. Shoot. Yeah, we need to get some spider eggs too, guys. Lots to do. Put all these seeds back. And take the toe flax seeds. Where are they? Okay, 309. Yeah, we're good. I gotta do some freaking toe flax runs now. Because I don't really get toe flax anywhere else anymore. I don't do too many raids. That's where I usually get my toe flax. But lots of farming to do. How many EQ keys do I have? Okay, I'm gonna make a bunch more. Because I got them. These IQ key shards are so nice. Ah, uh, so freaking nice, man. I can make like almost four more casing for next faster, a lot faster than just getting IQ keys and then IQ keys for Armadillo. 